sun, the sun setting at Glendale, Arizona, the home of the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. It has brought together fans of Boise State from Idaho and the fans of Texas Christian University from Fort Worth, Texas. A great matchup, undefeated teams, Boise State and TCU in the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. I'm Sam Rosen, along with Tim Ryan and Chris Myers. A great matchup, two highly ranked teams, undefeated. Boise State, a high-scoring team, was here in 2007 and won. This is a team that depends on their quarterback, Kellen Moore. Well, and he's really good, Sam. They are so explosive offensively, 44 points per game. I think they're looking for a little redemption. Look, TCU is the only team to beat them in the last couple of years. A couple of keys for Boise State. I think they got to be able to run the football. They got to have some balance offensively to take the pressure off the quarterback, Kellen Moore. He is incredibly good. His numbers speak for themselves, and he's got to be patient. TCU's great on defense. They keep everything in front of them. The quarterback's got to be patient today. The Horn Frogs of TCU went 12 0 this season. They have won four consecutive bowl games. They are here on the big stage because they feel they have a team that can contend for the national championship. Well, and they're worthy of that respect. Look, they are very, very good on both sides of the ball when you look at them. The quarterback, Mark Dalton, really gets after it. Uh, and he can throw it everywhere. He can spread it around. But when I think of the Horn Frogs, I think of a power run game. Boise State's got to get after it today at the D-line and linebackers. Take the fight to TCU. Boise State comes out with the sledgehammer. That signifies their special teams and the hammer that they hit with. The Boise State Broncos, 13-0 this season. They met up with TCU in the Poinsettia Bowl last season. TCU won by one point. They're coming here to try and turn it around on the big national stage, trying to go undefeated. And the Horn Frogs of TCU waiting for their appearance. And here they come, led by head coach Gary Patterson in his ninth season. He has brought TCU up to the national stage, ranked number four in the BCS standings. What a season they've had. They won 12 and 0. They've won 14 in a row. This is a team with great offense and great defense. Jerry Hughes, their star on defense, is a player that maybe will go in the first round, Tim. Well, he is a great football player. He's got 11 and a half sacks this season, and I think, you know, he's clearly the guy that Boise State's got to get blocked. Boise State down their starting right tackle today, so they'll have Brunel Myers out there playing right tackle against Jerry Hughes. That's going to be a matchup to keep our eyes on. Now we go down to the field to Chris Myers. What's going on, Chris? Well, it's noisy and loud, Sam, with Coach Gary Patterson. Biggest game in the history of TCU football. Coach, how would you describe the magnitude of the moment? Well, I don't know if it's the biggest game in our history. That would mean this is the end. So for us, you know, we're here, we got a great opponent. Came here to win, and we'll see you in the next three hours whether we can get that done or not. All right, well, good luck, Coach. We appreciate it. I appreciate it, too. All right, Sam, some of the players feel they're playing for a national championship on TCU. The Broncos getting set to kick off. Back deep is Greg McCoy, a defensive back, probably the fastest man on the TCO team, Kyle Brotsman. The junior will kick it off. Chris Peterson, the head coach of Boise State, his teams have gone 48 and 4 over his four years at Boise. And we're underway in the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. McCoy on the return. Is hit hard and brought down at the 24 yard line by Byron Hout. Andy Dalton, the red shirt junior, will lead his team onto the field on offense. The Mountain West Conference Offensive Player of the Year. Now let's take a look at the Merrill Lynch Wealth Management starting lineups. Outstanding running backs, Joseph Turner, the senior, Ed Wesley, Matthew Tucker, those are freshmen. Antoine Hicks, Jimmy Young, great speed and wide receiver. The offensive line is very, very big. 
four of the five are over 300 pounds. Out of the shotgun. Dalton to put it up, has time, and throws wide. Jeremy Curley, the intended receiver, the, the pass thrown offline. Now let's take a look at the Merrill Lynch Wealth Management starting lineups for Boise State on defense. Four-man front, Ryan Winterswike, the junior, gets the most pass pressure. The linebackers are active. Darrell Acre, outstanding. Kyle Wilson, senior cornerback, the leader in the secondary. Three wide receivers inside handoff Turner slowed down and brought down by Winston Venable. Good start defensively by Boise State. Well, and that's what they're going to have to do. Chase Baker, who's playing nose tackle for Boise State, really did a good job of driving the offensive lineman into the backfield and making Jerome Turner bounce. As soon as he bounced, Winston Venable was right there to clean it up. Venable has had an outstanding season. I think when you watch number 17 today for Boise State, especially with all the perimeter and the edge running, some of that zone read stuff you see out of TCU, Venable's going to have to have an outstanding performance. Four wide receivers on third and ten. Everybody out. Dalton throws, completes to Ryan Christian, but he's brought down short of the first down. George Iloka and Brandon Thompson in on the stop on Ryan Christian and TCU brings out the punting unit. Anson Kelton big sophomore 6'4 260 with a powerful leg. Watch out for Kyle Wilson back there now this guy is a terrific terrific punt returner a couple of touchdowns. The guy can really really return the punts good kick by Kelton over the head of Wilson he grabs it at the six brings it back and falls forward to the 15 yard line Malcolm Williams with a tackle for TCU 62 yard punt a nine yard return and the red shirt sophomore Kellen Moore from Prosser Washington 39 touchdown passes this season leads his team onto the field. Yeah, incredible. 64 in two years. An amazing number for him. 39 touchdowns. You said it. He throws a touchdown every 10 passing attempts this year for Boise State. And they work out of the shotgun as well. Stacked wide receivers to the left. Moore gets pressure from Daniels, throws it way downfield for Titus Young and overthrew him by five yards. He's got a strong arm. Let's take a look at the Merrill Lynch Wealth Management starting lineup for Boise State. Jeremy Avery rushed for over 1,100 yards. Dan Paul, a good blocking fullback. Titus Young, outstanding speed. And Tommy Gallardo, the tight end, an excellent blocker. Up front, Thomas Bird, the center, calls all the signals. He's a coach's son. He knows football. Two running backs, Jeremy Avery and Doug Martin in the backfield. Moore on second down. Off the hands, incomplete. Intended for Austin Pettis, who is back from a broken leg, suffered in the last game of the season. Let's take a look at the Merrill Lynch Wealth Management starting lineup for TCU on defense. Jerry Hughes, the All-American award winner. He's the man to watch, but Wayne Daniels is outstanding as well. Darrell Washington and Tank Carter, excellent playmakers and linebacker. Nick Sanders, good shutdown corner. Greg McCoy, the man with a great speed on the other cornerback. Kellen Moore's brother Kirby is in at wide receiver. Moore puts it up deep again and overthrows everybody. Titus Young was the man out there, but he was well covered. So it's three and out for each team in their first possession. Yeah, that was a miscommunication on the route. The receiver was nowhere near the football when Kellen Moore just unloaded it down the sideline. He did do a good job of stepping up. Jerry Hughes had good pressure around the corner. That's one thing. You look at Kellen Moore for a young guy, Sam, he's got a great presence in the pocket, knowing when to subtly move around. Jeremy Curley. The Mountain West Conference Special Teams Player of the Year, two touchdown returns this season, will receive Ross, rather, Brotsman's punt. Curley 
takes it to the outside with good room. And he is chased out of bounds by Kyle Efall. But good field position for TCU. There's a feet and flag on yeah, the play on I think, the far side. I think they're going to get Tanner Brock with a late hit over on the sidelines. He absolutely ear -holed a Boise State player who was trying to cover the kick. Dead ball. Personal foul. Number 35. TCU. 15 yard penalty. First down. That's Tanner Brock, the man you called. There's the late hit. So it cost TCU 15 yards. We'll be right back. We are back. Let's take a look at tonight's Ram keys to the game, Tim. Well, Boise State up front. They've got to be physical with TCU's offensive line. TCU put up 275 yards rushing on them last year in the Point Seattle Bowl. And then TCU, they have got to stop the run and make Boise State and Kellen Moore one-dimensional. Dalton, the quarterback, the true freshman Matthew Tucker, number 29, and at running back. Tucker was got the fake, but it was Dalton carrying. Dalton, a good runner. Gets up across the 35. Dalton rushed for over 500 yards this season. Well, and he's so much better at, at, at the zone read. And he's going to take a look at this backer. He squeezes along with the defensive end. Now he's just going to take it right out of the belly of the tailback, and he's going to run. And you look at Andy Dalton, and he is a clear running threat. He didn't even run the football in high school. I was talking to him the other day. He said he only ran it about 10 times, but his feel now of the zone read is so much better than it used to be. Tucker, nice little cutback and a good run. Takes three, maybe four. Boise State Broncos to stop him at the 44. That's a first down for TCU. Luke Shivers, the fullback, with a good block. They have got a good running attack with all four of these players over 500 yards rushing led by Matthew Tucker and Ed Wesley both freshmen and Matthew Tucker is a true freshman he's incredibly good TCU going with the up tempo and the hurry up offense in motion Wesley the running back everybody out quick pass is intercepted Brought back by Brandon Thompson for a touchdown for Boise State. Junior cornerback Brandon Thompson with the pick. The fourth interception return for a touchdown this season for the Boise State Broncos. Well, and that's what you can do when you're sitting in the zone. And Brandon Thompson is just going to read the quarterback and undercut the slant route. You see right there, you had the slant route from the wide receiver. And Brandon Thompson just read the QB, undercut it. Fifth interception of the year. This one going back for six. The extra point is good. And the... Boise State Broncos get off to a fast start thanks to their defense and Brandon Thompson. Sam Brandon Thompson brings it back. That's the fourth interception return for a touchdown this season. And watch Antoine Hicks. He just decelerates on the slant route. He just stopped and made it easy for Brandon Thompson to make the break on that throw from Andy Dalton. An upset Andy Dalton on the sideline moments ago. 51 yard interception return for a touchdown for Brandon Thompson. And you can't stop. I mean, if you're Antoine Hicks, you just can't stop on the slant route. Whether the ball's coming to you or not, you got to go. You got to finish the route. And I think that's what the quarterback, Andy Dalton, is agitated about. Greg McCoy and Jeremy Curley are deep for TCU. Brotsman's kick coming down to Curley at the two. Trying to find the lane. Battles his way up to the 24 yard line where he's brought down by Jason Robinson. Dalton quickly outside. And the catch made by Ryan Christian. A nice gain up to the 36. Very close to a first down. It is a first down. Ryan Christian, a versatile receiver, running back. Was a quarterback in high school. And 
we have come to the end of the first quarter of the 39th annual Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. Defense, the story of the game thus far as Boise State has a 7-0 lead. We'll be back after these messages and a word from your local Fox station. Welcome back to the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl in Glendale, Arizona. Sam Rosen, Tim Ryan, and Chris Myers. Glad you're with us. Quick outside. And the completion to Ryan Christian was brought down short game on the play. Now it's time for tonight's Tostitos game summary. Thus far, not much offense from either team. 73 yards for Boise State. 57 for TCU. Quick outside and the completion to Antoine Hicks, sophomore wide receiver with good speed and a dangerous, dangerous man on the outside. Well, he is a big play waiting to happen. You think about this season, only 28 touches for Antoine Hicks coming into this game, 10 touchdowns on the 28 touches. Pretty incredible when you look at it, and, and six of them came through the air as a receiver, four of them on the ground running. Two running backs in. Have to get to the 46 for a first down. Dalton gets time, but nobody open. Now he throws, and the ball is dropped by Bart Johnson. Incomplete. Johnson had a chance, couldn't hold on. Well, very good throw off the run because you're going to have pressure here from the outside, and you're going to see Dalton escape out to the right, and then he just throws a strike on the run to Bart Johnson, who can't hold on to it, right in between four defenders. Looked like he was already slipping, Sam, before the ball got there. Five possessions, four have ended in punts for TCU. One was intercepted and returned for a touchdown. Kelton's kick, a good high kick. Kyle Wilson at the 20. Spins, there's a flag on the play. Wilson up to the 24 yard line. This penalty will be against Boise State. He was hitting Malcolm Williams in the back. There's no 15. foul on the play. The block in question was on the side. First right. down. So with the discussion, they pick up the flag. And it is a good call because you look at he's completely in front of him and then there just gives him a little shove. Good non-call. Boise State from the 24, their fourth possession. Doug Martin and Dan Paul in the backfield with Kellen Moore. Moore goes outside to Titus Young. And a short pick up to the 26 yard line. Let's check in with Chris Myers on the sideline. Well, Sam, Tim Ryan mentioned Titus Young is the fastest player on this team, and it's obvious that Chris Peterson wants to get him the football. The fifth touch already for Young. Now, in pregame warmups, Austin Pettis said he was about 80% coming off that broken left fibula, and it affects some of the route running. So look for Pettis to be the go to guy throughout the game for this Boise State offense. Thanks. Doug Martin. Slow down in the backfield. Jerry Hughes grabs him. First, he was slowed down by Kelly Griffin, and Hughes stopped him. Bring up a third and long for Boise State. TCU, another program that has just exploded. Look at their recruiting pool. Deep in the heart go. of Texas. Absolutely. And, and let me tell you something. This program is no fluke. They're built to win for a while, but out to California, up to Jersey. But Texas is predominantly where they get most of their athletes, and rightly so. There's a bunch of great high school football players in the state of Texas. With two tight ends in, flag on the play. Moore throws, it's tipped, caught by Titus Young. And he is brought down by Alex Abiloye. The flag is against TCU. It looked like Jerry Hughes jumped offside. And that's just a great job by Kellen Moore understanding the situation. He's got a free play, and he can put up a risky throw as he did there to Titus offside. Young. Offside defense, number 98. That penalty's declined. Play results, first down. Jerry Hughes does it again. Here he is. So he's going to come off quick, jumps into the neutral zone, and then here's the throw right there. High risk throw over the middle over Darrell Washington in front of Ibiloye. 
And Titus Young comes down with a great job by the quarterback knowing the situation that he had a free one. Pick up a 30 on the play. The end of the round to Titus Young who's doing it all for Boise State. Short pick up here. Out of bounds just shy of the 30 yard line. Jason Teague took him out. Uh, Titus is and we've been talking about him and clearly he's the number one weapon for Boise State offensively especially without Austin Pettis out there who also had 14 touchdowns you look at Titus Young the guys 144 yards a game all purpose offensively clearly the guy that TCU's got to stop tonight Austin Pettis comes on Titus Young to the sideline four catches 63 yards spread offense more being rushed by Jerry Hughes who hit him as he threw big time pressure by the senior defensive end from Sugarland Texas Jerry Hughes. Well now you get you get an indication of his four five and the 40 speed he just flies off the corner. Jerry Hughes much decorated two time All American the winner of the Ted Hendricks Award and the Lot Trophy the Mountain West Defensive Player of the Year. 28 and a half career sacks 11 and a half this season and likely a first round draft pick Avery and Martin in the backfield Pettis went in motion Kellen Moore has time and throws short and completes it to Chris Potter down to the 25 yard line it's going to bring up a fourth down you see a lot of those shallow crossing routes against TCU, which gives these safeties opportunities for big hits. Watch this one by Latrell. Oh. Now, Tyler Latrell will come hit you now, the safety for, for TCU. And after missing a field goal try earlier, Boise State will go for it here at the 25 on fourth and three. Chandler Koch, number 88, is in. Keller Moore gets time, throws for Austin Pennis. Goes up and makes the grab at the 20 yard line. That's a first down. Coming back from the broken leg, Austin Pettis, the top receiver for Boise State, goes up and makes the catch for a first down. Well, good to see him involved in the game plan. And it, quarterback's going to put it up high. And Austin Pettis has the ability to go up and get it. Good throw from Kellen Moore, understanding the one on one coverage out there. Also, a very good job in blitz pickup by Doug Martin. Block and Tyler Luttrell. Wildcat formation. Kellen Ward split out wide, and it's taken by the running back Jeremy Avery, and he's brought down at the 17-yard line. A little different formation for Boise State. Yeah, and they call it their wild, and everybody in the NFL, it's the Wildcat, and it's the old version of the old single wing. I don't know about that formation there, the way they set it up, but they call it the wild. Good job defending it in terms of the perimeter, not letting Avery get to the outside. A big factor for Boise State is they're just keeping the ball away from TCU. They've done a great job. Yeah, they're owning time of possession right now. They got an advantage by about four minutes. Four wide receivers in, everybody out. Pressure by Jerry Hughes. The throw too high. Trying to get it to Austin Pettis, double covered. Five runs, six passes on this drive for Boise State. Doug Martin in the backfield. Everybody out. Kellen Moore puts it up for Chris Potter and missed him. Potter had a little room as he headed for the sideline. And now the field goal kicking unit comes on. Yeah, Potter, too, it looks wide open to me. Kellen Moore's just not on his game. Usually very, very accurate. He's just got the nerves working right now, just stretched out in front of Potter. He laid out, gave maximum effort to get it. Just no chance. That ball was thrown too wide. Hunter White is the holder. Botsman will attempt a 39-yard field goal. Missed from 36 earlier. This one he's got right down the middle. First offensive point scored by the Broncos of Boise State. They have a 10 nothing lead on TCU. The color, the pageantry, the electricity of the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. Now TCU down by 10. They need something here. They send Jeremy Curley and Ryan Christian deep 
to receive Kyle Bronsman's kickoff. Early. A dangerous return man. How about the contrast in plays? 30 plays for Boise State, 18 for TCU. The kick coming down to Ryan Christian at the four. And ran into his own man, was brought down at the 20 yard line. Let's go down to the field with Chris Myers. Chris, what do you got? Well, Sam, the center for TCU, Jake Kirkpatrick, uh, huddled his offensive lineman of the last series, said enough already with the penalties of the noise. Get it together. They practiced indoors at TCU and piped up the crowd, but nothing like what they're hearing here. Kirkpatrick's the leader. Thanks, Chris. Blitz coming. It's picked up. Pass to Christian, and Kyle Wilson pulls him out of bounds up at the 30-yard line, very close to the first down line. Officially, the field goal by Brodsman was 40 yards. Initially, they had indicated 39. Officially, a 40-yard field goal for Kyle Brodsman of Boise State. Second and one for the Horn Frogs of TCU as they try to get going offensively. Quarterback sneak. Dalton is shoved back, but he got enough for the first down. Came across the 30-yard line. Led by Jake Kirkpatrick, the junior center, was the only married player on the team. He's the guy who gives them experience and maturity. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and he's really a first year starter. You talk about flourishing in year number one as a starter. He's had a huge, huge season in his leadership, Sam, and you just, Chris talked about it. It's been incredibly good for that offensive line. Keeping it as Andy Dalton gets up to the 40. What's giving TCU problems with the Boise defense? Well, I think a couple of things. Number one, they, they haven't been able to convert on third down. They are 0 for 5 on third down, so they have been unable to continue the drives. But I think Boise State is in the head of Andy Dalton. I think he's got him off balance, doing a great job. I think Wilcox, the coordinator, is doing terrific work. Switching up the coverages, showing different zone looks, rushing three. Russian six on the blitz. There he completes to Antoine Hicks, and he's got a first down. Hicks did a good job spinning away and getting into Boise territory. A pickup of 12 on the play. And they've just kept him off balance, just switching it up. Russian three, dropping eight. Russian six, dropping five. TCU. And Andy Dalton hasn't been able to figure it out. TCU has two timeouts remaining. Inside handoff to Ed Wesley. And he's got enough for the first down. Wesley's first carry inside the 38. Clock running. Hurry up offense for TCU. Boise State's just getting three on the line of scrimmage. They're going to try to keep it all in front of them. Four wide receivers. Everybody out. The pass complete to Jimmy Young. His first catch of the game. Young pulled out of bounds close to the 30 yard line. TCU trailed at halftime only once this season. That was at Clemson. And TCU, that was the third game of the season. They came back to win that game 14 to 10. Four wide receivers. Wesley, the running back, Curley in motion. Dalton gets time. He throws deep. He's got a man. Clay has got it. Touchdown, TCU. <laughs> Curtis Clay, a junior out of Lockhart, Texas, taking in the pass from Andy Dalton. A big score by TCU in the final minute of the first half. And it's just a slant and go. Curtis Clay comes off to the inside. Brandon Thompson was playing on the inside, and then he went out and just took off. Yeah, they're going to get Brandon Thompson, it looks like, down in the end zone with a face mask. But that was a sluggo. Slant and go for Curtis Clay, the leader of that wide receiver group, and a perfect play, perfect throw from Andy Dalton. TCU really needed this big play. This momentum going in at halftime. 30 yard touchdown pass from Dalton to Clay. Ross Evans for the extra point. And he 
puts it right through. Boise State's lead is cut to 10 to 7 late in the first half. Andy Dalton coming up with a big play. Well, what a super read by him. There's the key right there, the safety. As he moves over, he knows he's got man on the outside. There's the slant, and he pump fakes it. Curtis Clay is able to run away from Brandon Thompson for the touchdown. But the key was Andy Reid, or Andy um, Dalton, excuse me, making the right read, seeing the safety go to the middle of the field. Sammy knew he had the one-on-one -on -one matchup he wanted on the perimeter. Because of the face mask penalty, TCU will kick off from the 45-yard line. Kevin Sharples will kick it off for the Horn Frogs. Back deep, and it's brought out by Titus Young. And he is brought down short of the 10. He gambled. But Tanner Brock, the younger of the Brock brothers, was in on the tackle. <laughs> Kellen Moore under center. Jeremy Avery carrying. And he's stopped at the 11-yard line. Each team with two timeouts remaining. As the clock winds down. Andy Dalton. TCU needed a spark offensively. And Andy Dalton gave him to gave it to them. Quick strike offense for TCU. Five plays. They went 62 yards in the big touchdown pass. Well, like I said, I mean they, they are certainly capable of finding their groove and putting plays up in a hurry. They're 40 points a game during the season. TCU with the favorites coming in. Couldn't get their offense going until the end of the first half. Boise State got a big interception. Touchdown return by Brandon Thompson. 51 yards. They put up three points offensively, that's all. But Boise State has the lead. The Horn Frogs huddle on the field before they head for the locker room. Andy Dalton feeling good at the end of the half as TCU gets on the board. The Reese's halftime show is coming up next. Welcome back to the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl in Glendale, Arizona. Two of the highest scoring teams in the nation locked in a defensive struggle, Tim, and it's been interesting to see how they battle back and forth. Well, they have, and I'm with you. I think both defenses have been outstanding here in the first half of this football game. We knew about TCU. They're the best defense in the nation. We knew they'd come in and play well. I got to tell you, though, I'm a little surprised and particularly impressed with Boise State and what they've done on defense. I mean, they have made big plays all over the place, and take a look here. I mean, you see... Kyle Wilson with a nice pass breakup right there. Now you're going to see Brandon Thompson. He's going to undercut a slant route. He's going to make a house call, take that back for six points. Kyle Wilson coming off the boundary on a sack, and then a couple of big run stops. That one on Turner, and then another one here on Turner. Boise State defensively really has done a very good job, also in the pass game, of tackling in space because Andy Dalton has unloaded a lot of the footballs underneath versus that zone, and Boise State has really rattled up. Uh, rallied up, excuse me, and been very effective with their tackling. Let's check in with Chris Meyer, see what he has for halftime. Chris. Sam and Tim, Chris Peterson just said he's not surprised the defenses have dominated. He needs Kellen Moore. He just said he has to step up. He led the nation in passing efficiency, but he didn't face a defensive line as big as the one that he's looking at TCU. It's affecting some of his passes and his accuracy. Gary Patterson, his horse, losing his voice already, said his team was tight in the first half, said that he thought his team worked them too hard in practice leading up to this game and he said if we get the ball we're going to run it more in the second half and try and wear down their defense and he said he's not going to adjust his secondary for Titus Young but they will be aware of where he is. Sam, Tim. Thanks very much Chris. Boise State will get the kickoff to start the second half but I'm wondering about that late touchdown for TCU and the effect it'll have on the Horn Frogs and their offense when they get the ball. Well, that's huge momentum and confidence for them. They could not get anything going. Andy Dalton was confused it looked like early in the first half it just what he was seeing found his groove. Titus Young and Doug Martin deep. The ball bounces. Titus Young takes it at the 10. Picks up a couple of blocks. Trying to get outside. A little cutting 
behind one of the defenders and Titus Young goes down at the 32. Now it's time for tonight's Ford first half stats. Total yards pretty close. The Very close to Boise State. This, this is the one right here now. 28 rushing yeah. yards for TCU, a team that's up over 250 yards every game on the ground. And they rolled Be uh, Boise State last year in the bowl game for over 270 yards. Not as effective today on the ground. Don't forget that one turnover. That was huge touchdown. because it was that's a right. touchdown for Boise State. Jeremy Avery and Don Paul in the backfield. Kellen Moore, the quarterback under center. It's Avery. Got a good block from Paul. Short pickup. Darrell Washington comes up to make the tackle. Well, he is an outstanding tackler. He leads this defense in tackling, and you're just not going to get away from that guy in space. There was a few examples in the first half where he's just not going to stay blocked long. He'll disengage, and then in the open field, you're not going to be able to shake him because of his athleticism. Two backs in for Boise State, but they split one of them. Doug Martin out to the left. Jeremy Avery in the backfield. As they line up Wildcat, they step it to Avery. He hands to Martin. There's a good hole. Martin gets up to the 41 yard line. They've used that Wildcat formation a couple of times. That's a pickup of eight. Real nice job by Tyler Luttrell, who's going to be out to the right of your screen, the safety. And you'll see him. He's going to force it all back inside. There's him. It goes back inside. Now, this safety, the deep safety, is going to stay at home. T.J. Johnson comes out. That's just perfect defense from everybody out there on the perimeter. Kellen Moore back in. Third and one. And the toss to Avery behind Don Paul. He's tackled for a loss by Darrell Washington. The senior linebacker does it again for TCU. Well, just a great job. Just keying and diagnosing. Keys the play and then shoots it. Diagnoses what it is, and then he goes and finishes. You get a good example right there of his speed in the open field. He just ran the alley and prevented the running back from picking up the first down. That's a big time play. Excellent defensive series for TCU, led by Darrell Washington. Three and out for Boise State. Kyle Brotsman. Looks like they're trying to draw TCU offside. Couldn't do it. Brotsman gets it away toward the sideline and it bounces out of bounds at the 23 that's a great punt by Kyle Brodsman TCU back in the 30s a powerhouse in college football the legendary Dutch Meyer won two national championships with two legendary quarterbacks slinging Sammy Waugh in 1935 led TCU to a Sugar Bowl win and then it was Davey O'Brien the 1938 Heisman Trophy winner leading the Horn Frogs to a Sugar Bowl win and another title in 1938. The glory days of TCU. Turner is tripped up. Good defensive play up front by number 99, Michael Atkinson, a freshman from Windsor, Ontario, who is known as Canadian Bacon. <laughs> They went up to scout <laughs> oh, someone else great. and they saw him playing in Windsor. They do some scouting in Canada and sure enough they do recruiting up there and they found Michael Atkinson a 332 pound freshman nose tackle. <laughs> Dolphin throws short and takes to Jimmy Young. Nice move against Brandon Thompson and then he's taken out by George Iloka in Boise territory down close to the 42 yard line a 14 yard pickup. Well and that's the key look if you're going to play off coverage Andy Dalton's going to read the defense he's just going to get it out and then you've got to come up and tackle and that time he fired it immediately to Jimmy Young and Jimmy made a nifty little move to shake down uh, Brandon Thompson to pick up extra yards and get the first Andy Dalton 15 of 22 135 yards one touchdown one interception. TCU on the move. Trailing by three. Quick outside. Jeremy Curley. 
Curley ridden out of bounds by Brandon Thompson at the 38 yard line a pickup of five on the play. Let's check in with Chris Myers. Chris. Sam we're seeing a different Andy Dalton comp by his coach and the coaching headsets working here in the second half. Now Dalton according to his teammates during the year when the team was on the road at Clemson trailing 10 7 in the second half in a driving rainstorm rallied the team on an 86 yard drive. They took the lead. His confidence has never been higher and his teammates say it was a turning point. It appears he's continuing that at this moment. Jonathan Jones in at wide receiver. The pass to Jeremy Curley. He avoided Kyle Wilson. Great move by Curley and Winston Venable finally brought him down at the 16 yard line of Boise State. This is too easy right now for Boise State and Andy Dalton is just going to take what the defense gives him and look at the cushion that Kyle Wilson has here. He's come over to the field going to have a clear out route there and that's just too easy. See there Curtis Clay on the clear out route Kyle Wilson with too big of a cushion. He can't get there and then again he misses the tackle. And Curley's able to pick up the extra yards and they've got it down into the red zone. Game 22 on the play. Two tight ends in. Matthew Tucker in the backfield. Dalton still got it and he's brought down. That was nice penetration on the play by Aaron Tevis, sophomore linebacker out of Tucson, Arizona. Close to home for Aaron Tevis, a finance major. Who made the stop on Andy Dalton. Big test now. The Boise State defense. As their 10-7 lead is in jeopardy. Fullback steps back. Dalton on the quarterback draw. Trying to get outside. Good tackle on the play by Jerron Johnson. Junior from Compton, California. Jerron Johnson making the play. Well, and he was a middle linebacker. Here he is here. He was a middle linebacker in high school. You can see his instincts. He's reading the quarterback. And he just got up and as Andy Dalton tried to get to the perimeter, it was it was not happening. With Jerron Johnson, the number one tackler on this defense. They have to get to the six yard line for a first down. Tucker, the running back, splits out on the empty backfield. Quick outside to Matthew Tucker. And he's wrestled down at the seven yard line by Aaron Tevis. Another good play by sophomore linebacker Aaron Tevis. Well, and that's the key, and we've been talking about it this drive. If, if you're gonna you're gonna play off and soft and let Andy Dalton just get it out in about a second and a half, you've got to rally up and make tackles. It's a really good job there by Aaron Tevis. Ross Evans comes on as TCU will attempt a field goal from 29 yards out. Evans 14 for 17 this season. And the kick is right through. And the game is tied. So the Horn Frogs of TCU, who were down 10 early, have come back to tie the game. TCU tying the game after being down 10 0 in the first half. Kevin Sharples teeing it up. Sharples, a junior from. The Woodlands Texas TCU Sam came out on defense and their best players that last drive made great plays. I mean Darrell Washington in this second half has been everywhere and then it was Jerry Hughes that had the big tackle and the forced fumble. Titus Young from the four. He's quick but he's brought down across the 25 to 27. Boise State from the 27. Austin Pettis is in. Split out wide to the right side. Now he motions. Tell him more. They're going to get vertical. Looking to put it up. Goes short out of the backfield. Jeremy Avery's got a first down. Out of bounds at the 40 yard line. 13 yard gain on the play. Kellen Moore 17 of 28 152 yards. You just wonder when Boise State and Kellen Moore are going to try to dial up that deep vertical pass to Titus Young. We have reached the end of the third quarter when you have two unbeaten teams as highly ranked as these you look for a terrific ball game 
That's what they're giving us in the Tostitos Festi Fiesta Bowl. At the end of the third quarter, we're tied 10-10. The Fiesta Bowl continues after these messages from your local Fox station. Welcome back to the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl in Glendale, Arizona. Sam Rosen, Tim Bryan, Chris Myers, number four in the BCS, TCU, 12-0, number six in the BCS. Boise State, 13-0, tied 10-10 as we start the fourth quarter at the 40-yard line. Kellen Moore, Jeremy Avery carries, and he's tripped up. Gets forward to the 43. This has been a hard-fought battle. The defenses have been outstanding in this game. Kellen Moore looking for brother Kirby, and he's got him. And Kirby gets close to the first down line. Let's see where the spot is. It's right there. Kirby Moore played some basketball in high school at Prosser, Washington. But he said he never was the football junkie his brother Kellen was. But <laughs> Kellen used him as a receiver, and here they are together at Boise State. Still catching the ball the way they did in the backyard. Raphael Priest is on the field. He was not supposed to go, but he's out there. Doug Martin carries, and he's brought down on the play. Well, they started playing football at age nine to Kellen Moore, and there was brother Kirby right alongside, the younger brother, and he started throwing to him, and dad, Tom, coached him up in high school. And we talked about being a football Watch junkie. They downloaded football oh, games, man. and he broke up defenses, and this season, he threw 39 touchdown passes. Yeah, one, every, one every 10 throws. He's got great football intelligence, FBI, in terms of understanding what the defense is showing and how to break it down. Kellen Moore rolls and throws to Kirby, and he's got it up at the 32-yard line, but there's maybe a gain of one on the play up at the 33. And I think that's what Chris Peterson, who they do a great job recruiting, and, and they're not so hung up on size and speed. Kellen Moore came in and talked to us the other night. He's six foot tall. He's about 180, 185 pounds. And, I mean, he's not imposing physically when he walks through the door. But when you watch him play, just as Chris Peterson did, won't get caught up on the size and the speed. He loves smart football players. Third and nine for Boise State. Everybody out. And the pass batted up in the air, falls incomplete. Good pressure up front by Wayne Daniels, the defensive end. A junior out of Kilgore, Texas. Again, I think the key for defensive linemen, anytime you see them get bat downs like that, number one, usually they're not getting great rush, so they're marrying the quarterback. But the good ones, and we've seen it a couple of times in this game, they read the quarterback. And as soon as that offhand, Sam, comes off the football, they know that the quarterback's getting ready to release the ball. So they screen in front of him, play it accordingly, get their hands up. That time you got a pass breakup, got a bat down. And TCU's defense comes up big after the turnover. Rotsman throws it on the fake, completes to Efra, the tight end. Kyle Efra inside the TCU 40. They fake the punt, and Brotsman hits Kylie Falk for a big first down. Well, and, and Boise State has these gadget plays. We saw it in 07. Watch this. He's sitting as the up back. He clears out right down the seam. How about the throw from Brotsman? Guy right in his face, and he throws a perfect strike to Kyle Efa for the first down, and a big, big first down. That was in the fourth, fourth quarter. That was a fourth and nine. They gained 29 down to the TCU 38 yard line. They are not afraid to do anything in big spots, Boise State. Three wide receivers left. Everybody out. More to Efa again. First down. At the 27 yard line. And suddenly Kyle Efa, a sophomore out of Boise, Idaho, and Capitol High School. Becomes a big target for Kellen Moore. You got to take one more look here at the fake by Kyle Efa. Here he is. He's going to release as the rush comes. <laughs> Brodsman with Tanner Brock right in his face. 
throws a perfect ball, and I believe that's the second time they've run that same play this year. Boise State with their punt team. Austin Pettis on the field. Kirby Moore motions. Kellen Moore gets pressure and completes it to Titus Young. Down to the 18-yard line. Alex Avilae with the tackle. Comes up just short of the first down. No pressure on the quarterback. Kellen Moore is going to get it out quick, but that time actually let that play develop, and he's just going to hit all those little open voids in the zone. You can't stop him from doing it. If you're going to play off and soft and show him zone coverage, he's going to be able to pick it apart if you can't get pressure on it. Titus Young, a career-high eight catches in the game. The play fake. Moore throwing wide open is Galarna. The tight end down to the two-yard line. Tommy Gallarda, junior tight end from Brea, California, making the grab. And Kellen Moore has been outstanding on this drive. There he is, Gallarda. He's just going to run out to the corner of the end zone. And the whole defense got sucked up. Darrell Washington, I believe, was the guy responsible for him defensively. Either way, Gallarda wide open. And Gallarda is a huge weapon now down in the red zone for Boise State. Two tight ends in. Doug Martin, big hole, he's in, touchdown! Boise State keyed by the fake punt and they have the lead again here's Brunson for the extra point it's good and Boise State leads TCU 17 to 10 look at the touchdown here Danny Paul with a real good block Chris Potter was able to kick out Wayne Daniels then it's the safety against Dougie Martin touchdown Doug Martin's 15th rushing touchdown this season Kellen Moore was five for six on that drive, 49 yards. Not bad, Doug Martin, for a guy who started the season playing safety for the first three games. Boise State has never trailed in this game. They had a 10-0 lead. TCU came back to tie and now it's Boise State's lead at 17 to 10. Ryan Christian and Jeremy Curley deep. Rotsman's kick coming down to Ryan Christian at the three. And he ran straight into one of the defenders. Stanaway. Travis Stanaway making the tackle. There's Doug Martin up, over, and in. And TCU has the seven-point lead. Apologize. Obviously, it's Boise State with a seven-point lead. Doug Martin taking the handoff and going in for the go-ahead touchdown. Now, TCU with the ball at the 24. And Andy Dalton's got him out of drive. Quick out to Jeremy Curley, who lost the ball. It's incomplete. Winston Venable covering on the play. Well, and Venable's the guy, too. We've seen him go after. He's a very, very good football player. Better at the run, Sam, than he is versus the pass. So they're getting him out there in space to the field. He's the field outside linebacker or rover. And you can see, I mean, that dude is built to play the run. He gets after it, but all this space is hard for him to cover. Four wide receivers. The play fake. Dalton goes outside. They pass off the hands of Antoine Hicks. He was covered by Brandon Thompson. Boy, Brandon Thompson's played a big game tonight. Let's go to the sideline to Chris Myers. Yes, yeah, Sam, it's been a stock market night for Brandon Thompson. Up, down, down, up. Remember, he was the guy who ran the interception back for a touchdown, but then got beat on the Curtis Lay touchdown pass before the half, and then came back with the second interception. He has had a three-interception game last year, but all he's thinking about now as the Boise crowd gets louder is keeping TCU out of the end zone. Third and ten. 
Four wide receivers. Dalton with time. He's going deep for Jimmy Young. He overthrew it. Three and out for TCU. We knew about Boise State's offense, but their defense has really played well. They sure have in, in every in every phase. I mean, the, the defensive line has been terrific at limiting the, the running opportunity. You got 38 yards rushing for TCU, a team that runs for over 250 a game. Then you look at the linebackers. They've made a lot of plays tonight. And then the corners, you can't say enough. Kyle Wilson has been terrific. Brandon Thompson in the secondary has been the player of the game. Hanson Kelton's punt, a good long one. Wilson backs up to the 18. Brings it back. With a little room on the sideline, he's out of bounds. Boise State was in the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl in 2007. Underdogs to Oklahoma, but they jumped into the lead in that game. They led at halftime 21 to 10, but Adrian Peterson led Oklahoma back with two touchdowns. And then oh. Boise State in overtime, two-point conversion, and Boise State won it 43 to 42. Well, the whole playbook is open for them. We saw the hook and ladder in that game, and then we saw the Statue of Liberty for the win. Incredible. Boise State using the fake punt tonight to keep a drive alive. Jeremy Avery bouncing off one tackler is pulled back. That's a loss of about three on the play. Let's go downstairs. Chris, what about 2007? Well, people still talk about it today. A fairy tale finish for the guy who scored the two point conversion to end that upset of Oklahoma. Ian Johnson, the running back who seconds after on live national television said he wanted to propose that did to Boise State cheerleader Chrissy on the field. That's true reality TV, Sam. And I spoke to Ian Johnson this week. He wanted to be here. He said he'll be watching on television. He's on the Vikings practice squad and happily married and said he still remembers all the twists and turns in that upset of Boise State against Oklahoma. And of course, you were the matchmaker, Chris. On second down, Kellen Moore throws a little wide behind Mitch Burrows. It'll bring up a third and long for Boise State. Kellen Moore, 22 of 36, 201 yards. A big third and 12. Boise would like to maintain possession and take some time off the clock. Three wide receivers left on third and 12. Moore has time. Wants to go deep. Way upstairs for Titus Young. Gets out of bounds. Incomplete. Young was covered, double covered by T.J. Johnson and Jason Teague. Yeah, I don't understand that play, to be honest Neither with you. I, I know it was third and long, but TCU had every one of their defenders extremely deep, and you just weren't going to beat them with a deep throw. And You saw some underneath routes that were coming free, and Kellen Moore tried to take the deep shot down the field. Risky throw with all those defenders deep. Last thing you want to do right now with 548 left up seven. It's throw a risky throw and get intercepted. Jeremy Curley is back. So we return the punt to Brotsman. Brotsman runs to his right. Sidewinder kick grabbed on the line by Curley. Good return by Jeremy Curley. And he is slowed down by Brotsman and taken out of bounds. But great field position for TCU. That Curley. time the line drive punt didn't work for Bratzman. Well, and that's the thing. And Curley's brought a couple back this year. He's got electrifying ability in the open field, but there was no hang time on that punt. You said it. It was a line drive. The coverage could not get down there before Curley was able to field it. And if he can field it and get a running start before you get any defenders near him, he's going to make a play as he did there. 39-yard return. Gives TCU a short field. Matthew Tucker, the running back. Dalton puts it up for Hicks. He juggles and drops it. Going against Brandon Thompson, Antoine Hicks had it for a moment. And then it rolled free, incomplete. Could not make a better throw. 
if you're Andy Dalton. And it looked like as Antoine Hicks went up, he got his feet tangled up with Brandon Thompson. You'll see right there, no, he didn't. He just jumped a little too soon, mistimed his jump, and couldn't come down with the football. Perfect, perfect throw from Andy Dalton. Antoine Hicks, a sophomore from Arlington, Texas. Tucker, the running back, splits out wide, empty backfield. Four-man rush. Dalton getting pressure, and they've got him. Aaron Tevis came up for the sack, the second of the game. Well, Tevis is just spying Andy Dalton. Andy Dalton is a good runner. Here's Tevis right here, 36. As Dalton scrambles and comes up this way, watch 36 converge on him. He's just shadowing him the whole way. As soon as Dalton breaks contain to the left and starts to run, you saw Aaron Tevis put his foot on the gas and accelerate right into Andy Dalton for a big tackle. They have to get to the 21 for a first down. Everybody out. Dalton throws short to Bart Johnson. And he's taken down by Venable. Forward progress to the 27-yard line. It's fourth down for TCU. Freshman Darren Koontz replaces the injured Billy Wynn. Dalton going up and down the line to let his lineman know the play. Ryan Christian in motion. Everybody out. Dalton being pressured. Throws and the ball's incomplete. Jimmy Young couldn't hang on. Boise State's defense incredibly good in this football game just timing it right and as soon as Andy Dalton broke contain that time to his right started to scramble the defenders got up in his face forced him to get rid of it Jimmy Young couldn't hold on to it on the sideline so impressed with Boise State's defense and, and in particular they're tackling in space Ryan Witterswike with good pressure yeah. on that last play now Boise State with the lead and the ball at their own 27. Doug Martin, who had the go-ahead touchdown, gets a couple of yards up to the 29-yard line. Tank Carter, the middle linebacker with the tackle. TCU with two timeouts remaining. Boise State has all three of theirs. The Horn Frogs need a big defensive stand. Over 300 yards for Boise State in this game. Only the second team to do it against TCU this season. Clemson the other one. Blitz coming. Martin is wrapped up short of the 30-yard line. Once again, Tank Carter was there along with Alex Ibillier. Here's that fourth down play, and it looked like Andy Dalton had the post route open right here. Right here, number two, Curtis Clay. You'll see him coming across the middle of the field. I mean, it, he never sees open. him there, too. He never sees him because he's running out to his right, and then all these defenders converge up and force him to throw it to the sideline. TCU uses a timeout. They have one remaining. 3.26 to go here in the fourth quarter with Boise State leading 17 to 10. A matchup of unbeatens in the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. Number four, TCU. Number six, Boise State. And both these schools know what a win would do for their football program. Two tight ends in. Gallarda and Efa, they both split out. Now Gallarda shifts. Moore gets time and completes it to his brother Kirby. Up at the 39-yard line, that's enough for a first down. There's the brother connection. 
Watch what they've done to Jerry Hughes, and they did it a lot tonight. One, two. They have Tommy Gallardo sitting right there next to Brunel Myers, and they're just going to double Jerry Hughes. They're going to make sure they keep TCU's best defender off the quarterback. Big cushion out on the side, and Kellen is able to find his younger brother, Kirby, for a huge, huge first down. With three minutes remaining, TCU just one timeout left. Doug Martin up to the 43-yard line. A pickup of four on the play. Tyler Luttrell with a tackle for TCU. That big number one for TCU. They only have one left. They need a couple of big stops here. Solid game for Boise State. Doug Martin hit by Tank Carter, the middle linebacker. Another good tackle at the 44 yard line. Brings up a third and five for Boise State. And just watch this right here. I mean, they're oh, it's still running. Obviously, running the football to, to milk and bleed that clock, but they're not going to run on, on TCU. TCU's got the extra defender up into the box. Anytime Boise State's going to put their fullback out there in two backs, we're going to see TCU put the extra defenders in the box to make this sure is, they outman them. This is the game for TCU. They have to have a stop right here. On third and five. Here they come. Comes the blitz. Kellen Moore gets rid of it and overthrows everybody. An all out blitz for TCU. A minute 16 remaining. Tell you what would have been smart right there if you're Kellen Moore with all that blitz coming at you is run it to the left and just go down and chew that clock. Mm. You make TCU take their final timeout instead of just throwing it away. You're right. Now TCU looking to go all out for a block. Rotsman gets it away. It bounces. Curly's got to let it roll. And it's down at the one yard line by Kyle Wilson. Fifty five yard punt. Last time Bratsman's punt was returned big by Jeremy Curley. But now TCU has got to go ninety nine yards. How about the plays by him tonight that punt right there knocking it all the way down to the one and then the great throw on the fake punt to Kyle Efa for what ended up being a huge huge play in this game. Well you see that. TCU with 106 remaining and one timeout. They've got to go 99 yards. Three man rush. Dalton throws outside to Antoine Hicks. He's out of bounds at the 13 yard line. 101 remaining. TCU has won 14 games in a row. Boise State trying to become only the second team to go 14 and 0 in a season. Ohio State did it in 2002. Everybody out. Dalton's throw to Curley, and he's brought down by Kyle Wilson. A first down at the 21, and the clock stops. And you know Boise State has had this one circled on the calendar in terms of an opportunity. Now they didn't know they were going to play TCU but an opportunity to play this team again. TCU is the only team that has beaten Boise State Sam in two years. TCU used their last time out. Gary Patterson brought his team to the sideline. They talked things over. That last play was not a first down. It's second and two at the 21 yard line. Billy Wynn, who was injured earlier, back in at defensive tackle for Boise. The rush is on. Dalton throws and completes it. 
Antoine Hicks fighting for yardage. Gets up to the 36 yard line. It's a first down for TCU. A pickup of 15 on the play. No huddle. And the ball is spiked to stop the clock with 42 seconds remaining. Today's game was produced by Mike Burks, directed by Sandy Grossman. The associate directors, Tom Huey, Tom Huey and Aaron Stoikoff. The broadcast associates, Eric Mandia and Matt Saldana. Our thanks to Gary Lynn and Emmett McGuire in the booth. There's Brotsman, the punter getting everybody fired up. Dalton being rushed, throws it up deep, and it is incomplete. Flag on the play. Jimmy Young gets up, yells something at Kyle Wilson. Jarrell Gavins was there for Boise State. Pass interference, defense, number 10. 15 yard penalty for the previous spot. Automatic, first down. Gavins, a sophomore from Miami, Florida, commits the interference penalty. Well, you better be careful with Antoine he or Jimmy Young, excuse me, running down the sideline without safety help over the top. And watch the hit from Billy Wynn here as he lowers the boom on Andy Dalton. Good throw by Andy Dalton with all the pressure in his face. The ball will be spotted at the Boise State 49 yard line. 36 seconds remaining. TCU out of timeouts. Jerome Gevins up to the sideline. Kyle Wilson back in. At one cornerback. The other corner is Brandon Thompson. Everybody out. Dalton getting pressure. On the move, he throws and completes it to Jeremy Curley, who's out of bounds at the Boise State 30-yard line. They're in striking range of the end zone. Nice job by Andy Dalton, just extending the play. He'll escape out to his right, and a good job by the receiver, Curley, coming back to the football. Has Boise State backed off too much, giving them too much room, Tim? Well, they can't do it now. I mean, they're in striking distance. They're going to have to play medium-range coverage. They can't play off and soft and get huge cushion. And that pass up for grabs is intercepted by Venable, who goes to the ground at the 28. How about the pressure from Ryan Winterswijk and then Brandon Thompson gets up and tips it up in the air. There's the pressure. Too much air under the football. Gives an opportunity for Brandon Thompson to recover. He has had a huge game. No question. Brandon Thompson, the defensive player of the game for Boise State. Boise State wins the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl 17 to 10 over at TCU. coach Boise State in 2007 made headlines with their win over Oklahoma oh, they're gonna get in the good. Tostitos Fiesta Bowl <laughs> and here they are again two previously undefeated teams and Boise State secures their spot as a national power I cannot tell you how impressed I am with their defense and how they played tonight they were so good at the line, the linebackers in the secondary, they were terrific.